This is the third video in the Introductions to Exponential Functions videos, and today we're going to look at the properties of exponential functions. We're still using the same learning statement, I can identify and evaluate exponential functions and their graphs. Let's look at the properties of exponential growth, the increasing function. f of x equals b to the x, and the base, b, must be a number greater than 1. This is a graph of the function f of x equals 2 to the x. You can see that the base is 2, which is a number greater than 1. This makes the function increase. The properties of this function are the domain is all real numbers, the range is from 0 to infinity, not including 0, because our function will never touch 0. The x-intercepts, there are none, because the graph will never touch the x-axis. The y-intercept is 1. There are no extrema. Extrema are um, the highest value of y on a graph. Well, this particular graph doesn't have a highest value because it continues to infinity. The asymptote is the x-axis because that's what the graph is getting closer and closer to but will never touch. The end behavior, as x gets bigger, f of x gets bigger. As x gets smaller, f of x gets closer and closer to zero. This function is continuous on its whole domain. That means that I can draw this function without ever picking up my pencil. There are no gaps, no jumps, no corners in this function. Let's look at the properties of exponential decay, or the decreasing function. f of x equals b to the x. It's the same, same uh, function, but this time b, our base, is going to be a number between 0 and 1, a proper fraction or a decimal with a leading zero, 0, 0.25. Okay. Here is the graph of f of x equals one half x. I hope you notice that this function looks a lot. Well, this function would actually be the same as two to the negative x, because now we've it's reflected across the y-axis. Um, the base of one half has the same effect as a negative exponent. The properties of this function are the domain are all real numbers, the range is from 0 to infinity, not including 0, the x-intercept, there is none, the y-intercept is 1, no extrema because this graph continues to positive infinity, the y's keep getting bigger and bigger as the x's get smaller and smaller. The asymptote is the x-axis, the end behavior, like I said, as x gets bigger, f of x gets closer to zero, so here's x getting bigger and f of x getting closer to zero. As x gets smaller, f of x gets bigger. This is continuous over its whole domain. I can draw this function without lifting my pencil. The next thing we're going to do is find the equation of the graph and then evaluate. I can evaluate the function by looking at the graph sometimes. If x is negative 2, if I came over here to negative 2, I could evaluate what y is if I could see it on the graph. But on this picture, I can't tell what it is. So I'm going to have to find the equation. But when x equals 1, I can come right here and I can say, oh, look, when x is 1, what is y? It's 1 half. What is y when x is 0? It's 1. What is y when x is negative 1? Well, it's 2. So I could go ahead and evaluate those. But the next thing that we need to do is find the equation for this graph so that we can evaluate f of negative 2. So let's do that. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find points on the graph. So I have found this point right here, negative uh, 1, yes, negative 1, 4, okay? 0, 2, and 1, 1. The next thing that I'm going to notice is that f of x is still getting closer to 0 
So it hasn't been shifted vertically. It hasn't been shifted up and down. But it has been reflected horizontally. The other thing I could think is that it has a B that's between 0 and 1. So I can either think reflected horizontally or I can think, well, B is a proper fraction. The next thing I'm going to do is think about critical points of f of x equals 2 to the negative x or of f of x equals 1 half x. Well, I know if I put in negative 1, it's going to give me the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. If I put in 0 here, it's going to give me 1. And if I put in 1 here, it's going to give me 1 half. Okay? So, I know what the critical points are on this graph right here. I can also use those same critical points because these two graphs are the same. It's just that this one is reflected and this one has the B of 1 half. So this table will go for either of these two graphs. I know that what I'm doing to my Y value to go from 2 to 4 is I'm multiplying by 2. So I'm doing 2 times the Y value because 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 half times 2 is 1. So I'm multiplying the y value by 2, which is a vertical stretch. Since it's a vertical stretch, I, need, I know that I need to put a 2 on the outside of the function. So I can either write f of x equals 2 times 2 to the negative x, or f of x equals 2 times 1 half to the x. Now we're going to evaluate this graph. So when I evaluate for f of negative 2, this is the one I couldn't see on my graph, I'm going to put in negative 2 right here. So 2 times 2 to the opposite of negative 2. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. And that gives me 4 times 2, which is 8. Now I could have just as easily put the negative 2 here. And if I had put the negative 2 in this function, that would be the reciprocal of 1 half squared. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2, and 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 2 is still 8. If I do f of 1, then I'm going to have the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half, times 2, which is 1. Here, I'm going to have 2 to the 0, because 0 is neither positive or negative, which is 1 and 2 times 1 is 2. And here, f of negative 1, the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. 2 to the positive 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. And again, I put them into this equation. You could have put every one of them into this equation, and you would have gotten the same four answers. The next thing I want you to do is pause this video and see if you can do this problem. We want to find the equation of the graph and then I want you to evaluate. Remember, if you can evaluate these before you find the equation by using the graph, you're welcome to do that. Um, but then you still do have to find the equation for the function. Pause the video, try this one, see what you can do, and then come back and listen to the explanation. Alright, look at this problem with me because this one has been shifted. Now, I've got the answer here, but I want to show you how I got this answer. First, we're going to notice that the graph has been shifted down one unit. How do I know that? Well, I can tell this by looking at the y-intercept. The y-intercept of, of an untransformed parent function for exponentials is always 1. I can look at this y-intercept and see that it has been shifted down 1. I could also look at the asymptote. The asymptote of any parent exponential function is the x-axis, y equals 0. And I can see that this graph has been shifted down, and now the graph is getting closer and closer to negative 1. So that tells me that my graph has been shifted down 1, so I knew I needed to put this negative 1 out here um, on the outside of the function. Now. Um, the next thing that I have to look at are the critical points that are on the graph. I can see on the graph that I've got the point negative 1, 
negative one half. I've got the point zero zero and I have the point one one. I have to shift these points back up one so that they become negative one one half zero one that's right here and one two that's right here. These are the critical points on 2 to the x. Since I shifted these points up 1, okay, this point right here would end up here. That's negative 1, 1 half. This point would end up here. That's 0, 1. And this point would end up here. And that's 1, 2. Those are the critical points on 2 to the x. So I knew that this graph then was f of x equals 2 to the x minus 1. Then I'm going to um, evaluate. I'm just going to take this 2 and put it into this function. 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. Put 1 in. 2 to the first is 2, minus 1 is 1. Put in 0. 2 to the 0 is 1, minus 1 is 0. And put in negative 1. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half and 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. I could look at this graph and find 2, 3, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1 half.